Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of the series on Azure OpenAI service. In this video, we are going to go through completions, playground and its parameters. And finally, I'm going to show you how to work with completions API as well. Now to work with completions, you should first select a deployment. I have shown you in my previous video how to provision an Azure OpenAI resource. And then I have shown you how to create a model deployment as well. Now one Azure OpenAI resource can contain multiple model deployments. When I say models, I'm talking about GPT models. Now let's quickly understand what these GPT models are. GPT, the meaning of these three words are generative pre-trained transformer. Generative means that it has the ability to generate human-like text. Pre-trained means that it has already been trained with a lot of data from the public internet. It has already been trained. You cannot retrain it. You can fine tune it. The word transformer, the underlying technology of these GPT models is neural networks. So you have to arrange the neural network. You have to architect the neural network in a certain way to make it work like this. The arrangement or the architecture that GPT models use is this transform architecture. As you can see in this page, we have a lot of models here. We have GPT-4 models and we have two options there. With GPT-4, we have around 8,000 input tokens and it supports up to 32,000 tokens. And when it comes to GPT-3 models, we have four options. We have DaVinci, Curie and Babbage and Ada. And DaVinci is the most capable model that can perform any task that the other models can perform with often with less instructions. Ada is the least capable model, but that is the fastest model. When choosing a model for your work, to get your things done, the rule of thumb here is that you should start with the most capable model. In this case, it is Da Vinci because it produces the best results and you can validate it. And once you have a working prototype, you can go down and find the perfect balance when it comes to latency and performance for your application. As you can see, we have all those options here. Since I have deployed a model already, I'm not gonna create a new one. Now that we have an understanding of what these GPT models are, let's understand what they can do in the completions playground. Now I'm going to give this input here to this GPT model and then I'm going to click generate. Let's see what it generates. Yeah, so basically it's, it's going to predict and generate the next possible set of words. Yeah, as you can see, it is generating a lot of stuff. We don't want uh, this many texts. So what we can do is we can control the number of tokens that are generated. I'm just gonna put around 50 tokens and then let's just try again. Now it's only generating 50 tokens. Now let's understand what these tokens are. These tokens, they're basically, one token is roughly equal to four English characters, 100 tokens, that's like 75 words. As you can see, it is not always equal to one word. There's a unique way that this token breakdown works. Now, if you go into this page here, you can experiment with it. Now let's ask, this has 41 characters and nine tokens. Now I'm gonna go back to completions playground. So as you can see, I'm generating 50 tokens. Let me just try generating uh, again. Each time it is generating something new. And that is because the temperature, as you can see, is one. The ability that the temperature gives us to control is the predictability of the text that it generates. Now, when I have one here, it always generates something new, but if I just reduce it down to zero, and let's try again. Let's see what it generates. Yeah, this is what it generates and it doesn't matter how many times I do this, it generates the same thing. And that is how temperature parameter works. Now that you understand how these two parameters work, let's try to build something with that knowledge. Let's try to build a bot here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna instruct the GPT model that you are the Mars bot designed to provide information only about Mars if you were asked anything other than mass, your response will be unknown. So I'm just trying to ground and limit the behavior of it. Let's see how it works. And let's see, uh, let's try to generate the answer here. What is the volume of mass? I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, let's see, let's try to generate it. As you can see, it generates the answer. And in addition to that, it generates a lot of other questions as well. And this we need to control. We can control that by using stop sequences. I'm just going to add this new line character here. When it encounters a new line, it's going to stop the generation. Now let's try again. 
Yeah, as you can see, it just generated the answer and it stopped there. But let's see if I try to do, if I try to increase the temperature here and let's see what it would do. Yeah, as you can see, it just generates uh, interesting answers. I'm just gonna try again. If you want your bot to provide precise information, predictable information each time, the best you can do is reduce the temperature. Now, as you can see in my instruction here, I'm asking it, if you ask anything other than mass, you should respond with unknown. Now, let me ask another question here. I'm just gonna ask, what is the volume of Earth? Yeah, as you can see, it's just, it is generating an answer here and this is wrong. I don't want uh, this to happen. So what I can do is I can just adjust it. I can tell the bot, this is how you should behave. This is how you teach the behavior into a model. Now, this is a prompt engineering technique called the few shots learning. And you will see that it is learning the exact behavior that we want. Now, I'm going to ask another question. Let's see. What is the closest planet to Mars? I'm asking, I'm still asking about Mars. It's going to say Earth. Now, I'm going to ask, what is the volume of that planet? As you can see now, it knows that it should not answer anything other than mass. With this one example, it has learned how to behave. The idea here is that it is not really magic. It is just predicting text, but it uses a really advanced technology to do that so that it looks like as if it's a human thinking behind the scenes. One last thing here, I just try to remove this and let's just, I'm just gonna remove this text as well. Let's see the behavior of it. Yeah, as you can see, having the, the previous text, what is the volume of Earth here, taught the bot how to respond to these questions. Now, if I try again, yeah, it is just answering with unknown. I use this example to show you how to work with these parameters. Now, let's move into the top probabilities. Now, what this do is that it controls the vocabulary it uses to generate stuff. Now, if I put something like 20% here, what it's doing is that it will only use the mostly used 20% of English vocabulary, English language. If I put one here, it's going to use all the words in English vocabulary. We have two more parameters here, frequency penalty and presence penalty. Frequency penalty is the parameter that tells the GPT model not to repeat words too often. Imagine if the model keeps using the same word again and again, it would get boring, right? So we can set the frequency penalty to make the bot use different words more often and avoids being repetitive. Now, presence penalty is the parameter that encourage the GPT model to use new and different words in its writing. It's like saying, try to come up with new and exciting words each time. As you can see, these two are pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna add these two here, these square brackets, and I'm gonna ask the model to generate it. Yeah, as you can see, it just appends the pre-response text to the start and post-response text to the end of the generated text. If you look around here, we have a lot of examples here that you can try out for generating natural language text. Now, I want you to understand two things here. The first one is these GPT models, they're just generating text. For a given input, it's gonna predict the, the preceding text. The next thing is the true power of these completions is actually not in the completions playground, but it's in the API. What you can do is you can just invoke this endpoint. Let me show you how to do that. So you can just copy this URL and you can do a post request to it. I'm just gonna paste it here and then we need the API key. Let me get the API key as well. All right, now let's try to invoke the API with these parameters here. As you can see in the JSON itself, we can pass the temperature, top P, frequency penalty, and all these parameters that we configured in this UI here. You can use this API to integrate this into your applications. As you can see, it just generated the next word, mat, and it just ended there. And you can use this completion playground to experiment with it and then you can integrate into your applications to do a lot of stuff. There's a lot of power. Now in this video, we have looked at the completions playground and the parameters. And in my next video, I'm going to cover the chat completion and chat completion API. And then I'm going to show you how to publish a chatbot to an Azure app service. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in my next video and thanks for watching.